Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the first four episodes of the series Wonderful Fate, released in the year 2021. A long time ago, there was a small kingdom named Yun Lai, which was threatened by enemy kingdoms, and its people were living in terror. Since two of its cities have been occupied by another kingdom, the Emperor Yun Yi is mad at the state preceptor, who is slow to send in the troops even after having military power. Yun Yi decides to lead the soldiers himself and recapture their lost territory. However, the fellow men plead for his reconsideration. Meanwhile, the state preceptor arrives. He explains that the national treasury is depleted and the weapons are inadequate, making them extremely fragile. Later, the daughter of the state preceptor, Ruan Qing, meets Yun Yi in his chamber and asks him to look at the wedding dress. Turns out that the state preceptor is planning to marry his daughter to Yun Yi. However, Yun Yi says he would rather die than marry her. As Ruan Qing keeps on insisting, Yun Yi gets agitated and castrates himself in order to end the doomed relationship. Following this, we're taken to a classroom where a girl named Li Fuzhu is studying a comic book. Turns out that the story of Yun Lai Kingdom is from the comic. Just then, the teacher sees Li Fuzhu studying the comic and scolds her for being careless at her studies. When the teacher finds out that the book belongs to Li Fuzhu's best friend, Xiao Zhu, he sends both girls out of the class. After the class is over, the teacher orders the class monitor to check Li Fuzhu's bag and confiscate all her comics. Later, when he checks the bag, he finds a lot of snacks inside. As Li Fuzhu tries to pull her bag from the monitor's hand, she loses her balance and mistakenly pulls down his pants. Embarrassed, he chases Li Fuzhu, who runs and hides herself in the boys' restroom. The monitor asks her to open the door, but she refuses. Meanwhile, the restroom's light goes off and it becomes dark. Just then, the toilet seat opens itself and starts to glow red. Surprisingly, Li Fuzhu teleports to another toilet in the kingdom of Yun Lai. The emperor Yun Yi, who's been inside the toilet, gets scared of Li Fuzhu and calls the guards, thinking of her as an assassin. In the next scene, the maids of Queen Dowager, Yun Yi's mother, tell her about a rumor of Li Fuzhu being a heavenly lady that descended to earth when Yun Yi was inside the toilet. Dowager believes the heavenly girl, Li Fuzhu, might be an auspicious sign for their kingdom, which is battling through poverty. Hence, she orders to prepare fancy clothes and jewelry for Li Fuzhu. However, Yun Yi decides to kill Li Fuzhu, thinking it's a trick from the state preceptor to use the girl and fool people. Inside the courtroom of the palace, Li Fuzhu observes the place and can't believe her eyes. Since she thinks she's dreaming, she slaps herself. She finds the hall familiar and remembers the comic of Yun Lai. Because it's impossible to enter inside the comic book, she still thinks she's dreaming and tries to wake herself up. As she tries to bump into the main door, Yun Yi opens the door to kill her, but she stumbles and falls to the ground. Later that night, Li Fuzhu wakes up in a bed inside the palace with lots of maids at her service. One of the maids, Lanner, explains that Yun Yi was about to kill her, but luckily, the queen arrived in the nick of time and saved her. Li Fuzhu thinks Lanner looks exactly like her best friend Xiao Zhu and asks her what's going on but Lanner says that Li Fuzhu is mistaken. She then asks Li Fuzhu to get ready with the clothes and jewelry given by the queen. In the next scene, Yun Yi asks the queen if she really believes that Li Fuzhu has come from heaven. She explains that as long as all civilians, military officials, and commoners believe, it is fruitful for Yun Yi. Since Yun Yi's enthronement, most of the civilians and military officials have attached themselves to the state preceptor. So she asks Yun Yi to integrate with Li Fuzhu, as everyone thinks she's from heaven. Yun Yi hesitates, thinking that if Yun Lai Kingdom doesn't prosper after their marriage, all civilians, military, and commoners will blame him. Hearing this, the queen reveals that she wants to play a safe game and make Li Fuzhu a scapegoat and blame everything on her if the country doesn't prosper. However, Yun Yi worries that Li Fuzhu will align with the state preceptor and plot against him. 
The queen assures that after Ruan Qing's marriage with Yun Yi, the state preceptor will not do anything against the Yuns. Despite all this, Yun Yi asserts that he will not marry Ruan Qing and that if he's forced, he will kill himself. Elsewhere, Li Fuzhu is treated in a royal way by her maids. Meanwhile, the state preceptor and his daughter, Ruan Qing, arrive at the palace to meet Li Fuzhu, the heavenly girl. Soon, Li Fuzhu arrives at the hall and stares at Yun Yi for his resemblance with her class monitor. She also compliments the queen for her beauty, which makes her very impressed. Then, she meets with Ruan Qing and the state preceptor and talks to them. Suddenly, Yun Yi challenges Li Fuzhu to prosper Yun Lai and make the kingdom powerful within one month if she really is a heavenly lady. Li Fuzhu accepts, and she even says that she won't need a month. In fact, she'll teach everyone on how to make the entire place covered in gold the following noon. The king is stunned by the statement and threatens to behead her in front of everyone if she doesn't keep her word. Later that night, Li Fuzhu decides to escape into her world by jumping into the toilet, just like she had arrived there. However, when she realizes that it's the same day that Yun Yi castrates himself, she decides to witness the incident first. After sneaking outside Yun Yi's door, she sees Ruan Qing and Yun Yi arguing just like she had read in the comic. In a flashback, we see Li Fu Zhu and Xiao Shu talking about Ruan Qing from the comic in their classroom. They talk about how Ruan Qing was jealous of her sister, so she poisoned her and had one of her servants assault her. Later, the sister committed suicide. Also in the comics, Ruan Qing killed the emperor Yun Yi. Back in the present, while Yun Yi tries to castrate himself, Li Fu Zhu slips and opens the door. The king is mad at her and orders the guards to catch her as she escapes from the room. Soon, she reaches the toilet and finds Lanner waiting for her. Li Fu Zhu goes inside asking Lanner to come to her world someday. Then she jumps inside the toilet seat and reaches into her world. When she opens the door and steps out, she sees Yun Yi attempting to kill her. Suddenly, she wakes up in a bed inside the palace and finds Yun Yi on her side. They stare into each other's eyes for a while, and Li Shu realizes that she's still in the ancient kingdom. It turns out that she fell in the toilet and fainted after her jump. Meanwhile, Yun Yi warns her to fulfill her promise until noon, otherwise he will punish her. After Yun Yi leaves, Li Fu Zhu asks Ruan Qing when she plans to kill Yun Yi like in the comic. When Ruan Qing acts confused, Li Fu Zhu tells her not to pretend since she knows how she compelled her sister to suicide. Also, her father, the state preceptor, has made alliances with the enemy states and has an army of his own as he wants to take over Yan Lia Kingdom. Just when Ruan Qing is about to stab Li Fu Zhu from behind, she turns around and Ruan Qing stops. However, Li Fu Zhu says that she's on her side and wants Yun Yi to die early as he always threatens to kill her. She asks Ruan Qing to help her or else she'll reveal her secrets to everyone. Later, Ruan Qing tells her father that Li Fu Zhu knows his secret deals with enemy states. She also mentions that if they don't rescue her from Yun Yi, she will expose their truth and make them a trending topic. The state preceptor thinks that the trending topic is some kind of a powerful hidden weapon and is confused about if he should help her or not. Back to Li Fu Zhu's chamber, a man arrives with food for her, but she ties him and leaves him in the room wearing his clothes. While she sneaks around the palace garden, she sees some guards searching for her and tries to hide. However, she steps on a stone and stumbles, almost falling into the pond until the king's younger brother, Yun Li, holds her and saves her. While he pulls her, he falls into the pond himself. Surprisingly, Li Fu Zhu runs from the scene without giving him a hand. Following this, she meets a man who asks her to chop the wood for the kitchen, mistaking her as a servant. He forces her to do hard work all night. The next morning, Yun Yi wakes her up and asks her to be present in the court hearing. While everyone asks her how to make their kingdom prosperous, she remembers her teacher talking about irrigation systems that makes the land fertile and prevents drought and flood. 
Hence, she asks for a map of Yun Lai Kingdom. But the map doesn't show any rivers or lakes to build an irrigation system. Turns out that Yun Lai is a landlocked state with only mountains around. However, they have wells for drinking water. It's almost noon and Yun Yi walks towards Li pointing his sword to execute her, since she can't fulfill her promise. Just then, Yun Yi's younger brother, Yun Li, who's kept himself away from state affairs, comes to her rescue and stops his brother from executing Li Fu Zhu. Yun Li asks his brother to give her another chance to prove her abilities. The state preceptor also arrives and explains to Yun Yi that she has extraordinary forte and her strategies can contribute to the state's prosperity. He asks him to hear what she has to say, to which everyone agrees. Taking the opportunity, Li Fuzhu explains to them about the irrigation systems. But when she's asked to share the techniques to build it, she says it's heaven's secret and can't be shared, as she herself is unaware of it. However, the state preceptor asks her to share it with Yun Yi since he is considered as the son of heaven. With this, all the civilians and military officials plead her to prosper their kingdom. In the next scene, we see the state preceptor praying for his deceased daughter, remembering how she took her life to safeguard the Ruan family's reputation after people judged her. However, Ruan Qing, who is jealous of her sister, blames her for tarnishing the family's reputation. Hearing this, her father stops her from speaking further. He then asks Ruan Qing to request Queen Dowager to let her live in their palace for a while so that she can keep an eye on Li Fuzhu. Later, as Li Fuzhu strolls around the palace, she sees Yun Li playing the flute. As they talk, he asks her to tell about her world. Soon, all the guards and servants gather to listen to her story. She explains about cars, airplanes, ships, mobile phones, and other man-made technologies. Meanwhile, Yun Yi also arrives to see what all the fuss is about. She talks about the freedom of love in her world. One can become independent and choose his or her own partner to marry. This makes Yun Yi a bit confused and he leaves. In the meantime, as Li Fuzhu keeps talking about different laws and rights, Yun Yi starts to get fond of her. Later, Ruan Qing gets the permission to stay in the palace from the queen. Just then, a maid arrives and informs the queen that Li Fuzhu is saying unethical things to the servants. This enrages the queen, and she immediately goes and yells at Li Fuzhu for misleading her people. Surprisingly, Yun Li takes the blame and mentions that it was his fault to ask Li Fuzhu about her world. With this, the queen forbids him from venturing out of the house for seven days. Moreover, she asks Li Fuzhu to learn some manners to be ladylike from Ruan Qing. Elsewhere, Yun Yi is remembering his love, who turns out to be Ruan Qing's older sister. Later that night, he gets drunk remembering his deceased love. Taking advantage of this, Ruan Qing goes to his chamber and seduces him, but he runs outside the room, much to her dismay. The next morning, Yun Yi asks his guard, Hong Yi, to check Li Fu Zhu's bag that she's been carrying around. Just then, Li Fu Zhu arrives and opens her bag, takes out her mobile phone, and turns off the alarm that's been ringing for a while. Yun Yi asks if it's a treasure from heaven, and she agrees. Additionally, she shows her all her snacks, considering them to be heavenly treasures, and starts eating. She shares it with Yun Yi and Hong Yi, who find the snacks very delicious. As Yun Yi eats those delicacies, he expresses how the commoners would be happy if they could also eat those snacks. After that day, Yun Yi and Li Fu Zhu get along. While Li Fu Zhu teaches Yun Yi to play Go Bong, he teaches her to shoot an arrow. She introduces him to music and movies. When Ruan Qing sees Yun Yi and Li Fu Zhu getting closer, she gets envious of them. Later, Ruan Qing meets Li Fu Zhu in her chamber and gifts her gold jewelry in order to bribe her and have a good relationship with her. However, Li Fu Zhu, who's aware that Ruan Qing is selfish and would go to any extent to get what she needs, ignores her. The episode ends as Ruan Qing storms out of the place in anger. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.